clearly defined security boundary. Okay. Because clearly I don't, yeah. I'm not understanding. Security boundary, so you've got uh, something over here and something over there. And <laughs> this guy wants to mess with this guy. Okay. Security boundary, if you put a security boundary in the middle, yeah. you can't do it without some security policy dictating what this guy can do to this guy. Oh, okay. If, if uh, you can't put a policy in place that stops A from affecting B in a certain way, mm -hmm. then that's not a security boundary. So if there's a way through that from A to B okay. that doesn't stop it, hey, is that allowed or not? Okay. Then it's not a security boundary. So then theoretically, then based on that definition, running as administrator automatically does away with any notion of security boundary whatsoever. And Windows today, yeah. Yeah. You, because as admin, you have all the privileges of, mm -hmm. that are the most powerful privileges. You can load a driver. And the, even admin approval mode. So. Just to clarify that, mm -hmm. when we talked about admin approval mode where you're basically running as a standard user, mm -hmm. but you are an admin. If you, you can choose to elevate at any point in time just by pressing the continue button. Yes, so, correct. So you are an admin and you basically are defining the policy interactively at that point. Mm -hmm. When you say continue, you're saying my policy as admin is to let this happen. You got well, it. Or to open the, uh, uh, to let whatever is happening. And now, happen. And you don't really know what's going to happen when you press that continue button. Like I said, it's there's no security boundary when you press that continue button. So there's a security boundary up until that point. Yeah. You press the continue and the boundary's just dropped. And now mm. now you've just let something run with admin rights, but you can't really say what's run with admin rights. You know that the executable, you know which executable ran, mm -hmm. but you don't know what that executable is, what DLLs it's going to pull into itself, and what code it's going to pull into itself, and what other processes it's going to talk to as admin that might influence its behavior. So, Interesting. So that's where, that's where um, the dialog box identifies the exe, but not anything else at this, True. At this point. So there's no security boundary there. That's interesting. And that once you elevate, that is your full admin context with all your privileges, all your accesses. Mm. So, you know, just take for example a command prompt. You elevate a command prompt. Yeah. And now you can do any, you can delete basically any file. You can run any program. You can load drivers from there mm -hmm. because that command prompt has full admin control. So, I mean, I guess it kind of begs the question, I mean, I don't get a lot of prompts on my day to day. Yes, and I, you should. I'm not doing a lot of administrative tasks. Yeah. Right? I'm not which is, which are going to be rare. Typically. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So the average user, if they're at home and they're experiencing, there's a lot of, UAC is taking a beating. Yeah. I mean, it's an aggressive, in your face sort of, you know, do you sure you want to do that? And of course, people are make Apple makes fun of us, but you know, let's talk about uh, the trade-offs that you have to make, right? At least you're giving a standard user running in admin approval mode the ability to say no. And I've said no before, mm -hmm. just because I actually I don't really, I'm not exactly sure what that service is doing. Yep. And so no, don't yeah, there's, there's two things that you get with that. Is one is the ability to say no if something sus pops, up, pops up suspiciously. Mm -hmm. The second is if malware does want to take get admin rights. But, you know, it's already if if you've got arbitrary code running in mm -hmm. your account. I don't know about you, but that would pretty much really ruin my day. Yeah. Because the malware running in my account has access to all my data. Sure. Can watch everything I do. Can watch me log into my bank. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so that's that's not good for me. But mm -hmm. if uh, so, malware can do a lot as you know. Yeah. But malware, if you're running a standard user or if you're not elevating it, can't mess with the machine. It can't turn off the antivirus, which if you look at Windows XP, where you're running as admin, the yeah. second a malware touches your box, mm -hmm. uh, your anti-malware can be disabled like that, right? <laughs> and, the, and the thing can install itself as a kernel rootkit and bury itself so deeply that it'll, you can never get it off without reformatting the machine. Mm -hmm. If it infects your account as a standard user, but doesn't disable security software, that gives the security software always a chance to clean the thing off. You know, one, if Microsoft's Windows Defender team, this is a, a virus or piece of malware that they get signatures for, they, mm -hmm. they figure out, hey, we've got to clean this thing off customer machines, or even Microsoft software malicious removal tool that comes out down with Windows Update and runs, mm -hmm. now that thing can be cleaned because it's not embedded deeply and it's only in your account, so yeah. we can clean it. 
and uh, but the second you elevate, the thing can take over the machine too potentially. So um, I forgot where we're going with that too. That's but, fine. That doesn't matter. But, we're just yeah, having a conversation. But, but the elevation, the, the bottom line is, and I wrote, I've actually written a, a monster article I, I, uh, on user account control internals. The way that all the different mechanisms work, and then talks about security boundaries and not security boundaries for TechNet magazine. Again, Excellent. I didn't have. If you, it's kind of interesting because if you look at the first three, this, that three-part series mm -hmm. on Vista kernel changes, where I don't talk about UAC at all, or the virtualization or the integrity level mechanisms mm -hmm. or the elevation process, mm -hmm. that three-part series is like 12,000 words, and UAC article alone is 6,000. Wow. So it's, it's you know, it's, to get it covered right is, yeah. a, is a huge thing. And so that's going to be in the June issue of the magazine. Fantastic. At this point, and I talk about all these things. Cool. And we, in, in the one on Channel 9, John drew out the diagram, but it certainly wasn't a 6,000 word uh, deep discussion. And that's just being terse, too. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So um, let's jump back to you now. I mean, we've covered this. I mean, it's very interesting that you're working at Microsoft. I mean, it makes sense. You've been working on system terminals for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, and you really care about and are interested in how, you know, making Windows better and how it works. And, learning more and more about it. And working with some of the smartest people in the industry obviously probably is fun. Yeah. Um, what got you in the, I mean, what got you excited about computer science and computers in general? I mean, why did you get into this racket? How's that for a question? All right. Well, we've got to reach pretty far back for that one. Um, well, all right. So, uh, it, so when, I, when I was growing up, when I was young, uh, uh -huh. I thought, always thought I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. That's what really excited me, planes, designing planes, okay. and in uh, ninth grade, uh, my friend's father worked for University of Alabama in Birmingham and got an Apple II for his home. It's one of the first ones, and okay. I went over and I spent the night there, and it's like, oh, look what my dad got, this computer. Oh. So we started playing on the Apple II, and that's when I was, it's like literally, Bang. probably within hours of yeah. starting to work on that, I said, this is what I'm going to do. Wow. So that so I became an Apple II internals expert, actually, <laughs> before I became anything else. And uh, I knew Apple's, the Apple ROM. I had the Apple ROM source code listing. I learned machine language for the Apple. I wrote in it at, a, wow. at this assembler assembler for it. And I wrote some extensions to Apple Soft. And mm -hmm. I wrote some tools for it. And actually, that's how I got into writing, too, for about computers. My first magazine article was called Apple, high res, Apple II High-Res Screen Dump. Nice. And it was published in... Uh, like December '86 issue of Compute magazine, <laughs> so that was that started cool. off the road. And then I just was like, okay, off for the let races. Me, let me ride this. That's cool. And then just went and got yeah. your PhD. Yeah, amazing. And now you're at Microsoft. And now I'm at Microsoft. And what do you do? I mean, you're you're on the Windows core team. Yeah. But you know, you're working on uh, so, Vista. Yeah. There's uh, so being on the Windows core team. I'm on this. Uh, board called CoreArch, which you've done a channel nine yeah, before so too. Yeah, right, right? man. So I'm on CoreArch, and being on CoreArch means that you're doing a lot of different things that are kind of over. Or it's kind of architectural guidance mm -hmm. and oversight uh, across Windows. So, which has you interact with a whole bunch of different groups and talk about problems and how do we architect? How do what are best practices? Design paradigms for new APIs and yeah. new architectures. Uh, that would be developed on top of Windows. So that takes me all over the place. And then I'm doing uh, kind of the core Windows uh, ownership of, or leadership, or yeah. I don't know, kind of the focal point for bringing together different people's input and putting it all down and kind of digesting it and saying, here's what's good, here's what's bad, here's where I think we should go with this. Uh, the team was formed for Vista, mm -hmm. right? And they actually accomplished some great things, in my opinion, uh, particularly around understanding the dependencies in our operating system. They're yep. understood now, yep. and that's a great thing. So, I mean, it's not something that you market, right? It's yep. like Windows marketing, like clear, connected, confident, and we understand all <laughs> yeah. the dependencies. Yeah. And we've got a layered system now, by the yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, let's talk a little bit about layered system. I mean, uh -huh. you know, in what sense? Like, it, well, uh, it, you talked to Rich Nevs and Rich Pletcher. I yeah. Think, um, Rich Nevs was in that Channel 9 interview. Absolutely, he was. Um, and he talked about MinWin project that mm -hmm. he's working on, which 
so it's analyzing the dependencies between different components and being and then 